All right, so Pete Cromer again, uh, ranch from Forbes, North Dakota. The last thing we kind of want to talk about today is why grasslands are disappearing and what we can do to stop it. Um, we tried to establish a little bit of a case for why grasslands are important. Um, part of the reason they're important, a big one, is a massive carbon sink that is, exists underneath them. And that's just from soil building, right? Um, but right now we're losing them and we're losing them at an enormous rate. And it's going to get worse just because of demographics of the Midwest. Uh, we're going to lose a lot more grassland in the next 10 years. Um, but there's a couple things that are contributing to this. Uh, there was a recently a very popular study, a uh, well-received study, by Tyler Lark out of University of Wisconsin Whitewater, maybe, Madison. All right. Um, and it, it, it quant tried to quantify the effects of ethanol demand. And it should be uh, stated here, it's not not just the ethanol demand itself, mandated ethanol demand. You know, they have a requirement to blend or create so much ethanol. And a certain amount of ethanol requires a certain amount of corn acres, is essentially. And they, that study did the best job they could to uh, quantify that. Um, it was a really, really thorough study. Uh, they accounted for, you know, how the economic considerations of what uh, increasing... Um, ethanol demand does to corn production, um, which was a lot of what the study considered. Um, there was one big gap, um, in part because it wasn't, was, was not what they were studying, um, and that was crop insurance. So this study showed a pretty massive increase in corn acres, which means in the Midwest you're talking about a loss of grasslands. If you increase corn acres, you're losing something else, and it's been mostly grasslands. Um, so we saw a massive increase in corn acres, according to the study, due to ethanol. Um, but one thing they didn't account for was ethanol and crop insurance. They didn't account for the crop insurance side of things. Um, and, and they behave in two different ways. You know? so, this, so this story of grassland loss is the same as the story of Amazon rainforest deforestation. Um, it's an economic story, in, in truth. Um, so if we look at it from the in the U.S., you've got the ethanol mandate, which essentially requires a certain amount of corn acres. Um, and that's, that's demand-inducing, right? So you're going to get those corn acres regardless, and you're going to have that demand for that corn. Um, but on the flip side of the coin, we've got uh, subsidized crop insurance. And what that does is it keeps people who plant corn and soybeans, but not ranchers, and this is important, not ranchers, um, from going broke when things get bad. So when normal climate or weather perturbations exist, you know, like uh, a drought or flooding, um, they don't lose much money. And another way to state that uh, is they don't actually own the cost of their risk. Um, whereas every rancher in the country does. If something goes bad with the weather, um, ranchers don't have anyone to back them up. Um, we, and we certainly can't compete with the federal government on this. Uh, and that's why we're losing out. It's not that ranching and cows and sheep can't provide a very good economic return per acre and do some really great things as far as externalities go, you know, preventing pollution, that kind of thing. Um, it, it's that uh, we totally share or hold the burden of our own risk. Um, and then on top of that, we don't have a mandated demand for beef or lamb. Um, and that, that causes an economic imbalance. And what's happening is anytime a, a piece of land comes up for sale, um, ranchers are they're losing those bids. They're losing those auctions because they can't pay the amount of money that someone who has their, uh, you know, has all their weather or, you know, all the effects, ill effects to their business um, that, say, weather like drought and flooding has. Um, they don't feel the impact of that. Uh, like a rancher does. Um, and those costs are massive. Those are massive, massive costs. And you're seeing that reflected in the price of land um, is essentially what's happening. And that's, that's what's occurring. And when I mentioned earlier that there's a demographic shift, it's that the boomers are retiring. Um, and they own most of the farmland and rangeland in North America. Um, and as they retire, uh, that land's coming up for auction and the ranchers can't outbid the farmers. Um, if we had something like crop insurance, you know, we could maybe give it a go, but that's really the wrong way to go about it. So that's, those are the main causes of why we're seeing so much rangeland disappear. 
It's also the same thing in the Amazon rainforest. Uh, but you know, the real question is what can we do about it? Um, one thing I, I think I talked about uh, earlier out in the grass, out in the pasture, um, was you can leverage your ecology. You can essentially make your grasses grow better. One thing ranchers have fallen way short on. Um, let your let your plants grow and make them healthy, uh, and that'll make it so you're more financially stable in your economics because your economics will improve. Um, it's hard to go broke with a lot of grass. Uh, the second thing we're going to have to do if we want to stop uh, rangeland conversion, um, we're going to have to be talking about getting rid of subsidized crop insurance, including prevent plant, um, and we're going to have to be talking about getting rid of the ethanol mandate. Um, if we do these things, then we'll, we'll see a drawback of corn acres, and we'll see things go back into rangeland. But as it sits, um, conservation programs that are trying to, say, slow rangeland loss, um, and then ranchers' wallets, which is really funded by grass or cows grazing on grass, um, those two things together, we can't compete with uh, mandates and subsidies. Um, so if you're sitting at home, and or I guess another thing you should do, uh, if you're a rancher, improve your grasslands. If you're not a rancher and you're someone who simply cares, um, get interested. Call call your representatives. Learn something about this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, buy buy some meat. You know, that'll work as well. So that's all I had for you. Thank you. Thank you.